Dajia Hao. I welcome you to J Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. June is Pride Month, and let's celebrate with the story of a historical couple. So let's get started. Duan Xiu Zhi Pi, the habit of cutting sleeves, or Duan Xiu, broken sleeves for short, is the euphemism used when talking about a relationship between two guys. The term stems from a very famous scene between perhaps the most famous same-sex couple in Chinese history. Han Ai Di, Emperor Ai of Han, was an emperor of the Western Han Dynasty. Born as Liu Xing, he was the nephew of the previous emperor Han Chen Di, Emperor Chen of Han. Since Emperor Chen was childless, Emperor Ai was adopted to be his heir. When Emperor Chen died in 7 BCE, Emperor Ai took the throne and became emperor at the age of 20. Many people had high expectations for him, and during the beginning of his reign, it was pretty positive. But soon, it would be rocked with controversies. Due to his interesting way of attaining the throne, there was a lot of family drama. Like, a lot of drama. So let's go a little into his family background, just to see how crazy it was. If anything, I feel that his family drama far outshadows anything else that would happen in his later life. Emperor Ai was born to the brother of Emperor Chen, Prince Liu Kang of Dingtao and his consort, Consort Ding, but he was not raised by his parents. Instead, he was raised by his paternal grandmother, Consort Fu, who was a very demanding lady prone to holding grudges. When he was adopted by the previous emperor, Emperor Chen wanted him to act only as his son, meaning that he was to have no relations or connections with his biological father, the emperor's own brother. Even his own mother was banned from visiting him. Consort Fu was only allowed under the position of a wet nurse. Things got dramatic. Skip ahead, after Emperor Ai took the throne, Consort Fu, believing that she deserved more, demanded that she be given an Empress Dowager title, despite never being Empress, and that her family be given titles as well. This put Emperor Ai in a very difficult position. He was torn between loyalty to the royal family who adopted him and his own biological family. But he gave into Consort Fu, which led to a very unusual situation where an emperor's reign had four official empress dowagers. It was so messy, but it's about to get even messier. Let's introduce the second role of this drama, Dong Xian. He started out as only a minor court official, no older than 19. They were best friends! They did everything together! They even slept in the same bed! The bestest of best friends! No, they were lovers, even this historians don't deny. Emperors were actually known to take on male consorts. Majority of the previous Han emperors had both female and male lovers. What made Emperor Ai stand out? was how uninhibited he was. But announce it to the world he did. In fact, he went above that when they started their relationship around 4 BCE. Emperor Ai lavished Dong Xian with not only riches, but honors and promotions. Both had their own wives. Emperor Ai had an empress and Dong Xian had his own wife. But pretty early in the relationship, Dong Xian and his family moved into the imperial palace. Not just living in the palace, the emperor ordered for a lavish residence, as lavish as the imperial palace, to be built for Dong Xian and his wife. A tomb was also constructed so that Dong Xian's final resting place would be right next to the emperor's. Even crazier? In order to legitimize their relationship with each other, Emperor Ai married Dong Xian's sister, 
just so that they had an excuse for their families to be officially intertwined. But I don't know if he actually visited her. Where does the term cut sleeve come from? Like I said in the beginning of the video, it came from an interaction between the lovers. According to the tale, the emperor and Dongxian fell asleep together on a mat. When it came time for the emperor to wake, he saw that Dongxian was still asleep and lying on his sleeve. Instead of waking his lover, the emperor instead opted to cut off his sleeve and let Dongxian continue sleeping. However, their relationship wasn't all butterflies and rainbows. In fact, it was actually pretty bad for the court and country. Anyone who opposed were either demoted or killed. Dongxian was given the most expensive jewelry in the treasury and best weapons in the armory. When the chief of security tried to block the weapons exchange, as he should, he was demoted and sent to the outskirts of the empire. Not city, empire. Another time, there was a eunuch that reported that a prince was using witchcraft. The emperor, seeing an opportunity to promote his lover, gave credit for reporting the crime to Dongxian. The eunuch was left in the dust. When the prime minister wrote a letter to the emperor voicing his concerns of what would happen to Dongxian if the emperor were to die first, which are completely valid, it was received poorly as expected. He was imprisoned under false charges, which led to him taking his own life. Anyone that grieved for his death were removed from their office, including the emperor's own uncle, who was also the commander of the empire's military forces. Despite not having experience, the commander position was given to, you guessed it, Dongxian. More so, when the position was transferred, the emperor issued an edict. Heaven gave you to be the helper for the Han Dynasty. I know your faithfulness, and I hope that you can guide the great affairs of this empire and follow what is good. This caused alarm in the court because they mirrored the exact words that Emperor Yao used when he passed the throne to Emperor Shun. Despite acquiring this position, Dongxian never actually commanded the military. Instead, he stayed with the emperor in the palace at all times. Eventually, later in their relationship, the emperor placed Dongxian's relatives in important roles and positions in the government, some even replacing members of the emperor's own family. What happened to them in the end? Emperor Ai was pretty sick. Apparently, he suffered from chronic illness from a young age, but it was hid from the public. This is also why we don't know what he was sick with. It was kept a secret. Said chronic illness is what took the emperor's life in 1 BCE. On his deathbed, he decreed that Dongxian was to be his successor and be crowned the next emperor. Everybody ignored this decree, even Dongxian himself. We're not sure why, either he just didn't believe it or he was too shocked to do anything about it. Grand Empress Dowager Wang intercepted the imperial seal, preventing Dongxian from ascending the throne. Instead, she reinstated Wang Mang and transferred military command over to him. Dongxian was accused of failing to attend to the emperor on his deathbed. All his titles were stripped and he was banned from the palace. Dongxian and his wife took their own lives the next day. Their relationship unfortunately caused the end of the Western Han Dynasty. Because of his affections to Dongxian, Emperor Ai did not have any children with his empress or consort, Dongxian's sister. His obsession led to instability in the government and eventually a power vacuum. The thing is, while the relationship didn't have the ideal outcome that we would have hoped, it was still a big thing. 
its representation of same-sex relationships that existed in ancient times. Even more so, when the relationship was criticized, the figures weren't criticized in historical texts for being gay. They were criticized because their actions caused the end of a dynasty. Emperor Ai wasn't a bad emperor for having a male lover. He was a bad emperor because he ignored his duties and abused his power. The same goes for Dong Xian. He was bad because he was greedy and used his position to attain power that he didn't deserve. He didn't advise the emperor to be better. He wasn't criticized for being a consort. Not the best example, but documentation of this couple is so important. It's representation that historians cannot deny. It's so important that an interaction between the lovers was passed down for millenniums, that it's slang for male-male relationships to this day. I have a teespring if you'd like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. So what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this historical couple? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. Please leave a comment if you can. It really does help out small channels like mine. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Jay Palace Yamingo. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, Zai Jenna!